Good morning, I'm Lynn, and welcome to another episode at Utopia Farms. All the boys are sitting around the feeder, laying down, but they've noticed me. And I'm going to open their gate. We just got to hold on a second. You think I could get this gate open, but this gate's a little awkward. There. Now, don't stampede. I gotta open the gate. You got it, you guys? Don't stampede. Stay there calmly now. Good boys. Good boys. Not much left here. You ate it all. Maybe I'll open it. Hi. Hi. Wonder if I should just let you guys out. I'll ask Arnie, but I'm real tempted to let him out. Well, we're going to try let the rams out into the pasture. They're kind of like the lambs. They, they're, they're not too keen on this. down that little path and into the pasture. Still a little damp out here, but hopefully when they get into the high grounds in the pasture, it'll be better. Well, these are the first ones out, out on pasture. Are you joining your group? Where's your buddies? They're out in the field, Scotty. So Michael wanted me to discuss why we picked the sheep and, uh, and showing 
the faults we're looking for as opposed to the pluses we're looking for. And the two kind of go hand in hand, and it is, uh, right now, it's harder to find the faults because this is the group we held back. But um, I can show you in here uh, two that uh, have more faults than others. So, um, you may notice that I focus really heavily on picking rams and looking for good rams. And the reason for that is we are much um, more picky on choosing good rams. Uh, we want good ewes, but a ewe is going to produce a few lambs in her lifetime. So she's not going to have a huge impact on your flock. So you can forgive um, faults a little more easily on a ewe as long as she's producing lambs. However, a ram, you should be thinking really hard about. You really should be buying the best ram you can possibly afford. And if at all possible, go see them in person because online, uh, we've been stung many times online. Um, I show pictures and videos all the time of our sheep, but still I encourage people to come look at them because, uh, yeah, you, you've got to be fussy on your ram. So I'm going to show good things, like 79 here. The reason the ram is so important is, like I said, that you is going to give you a few lambs over her lifetime. But this ram, even if you kept them, say, three years before you sold them on, and you put them on 50 ewes of breeding. So that's 150 ewes, say, in three years. And say she had twins. He's going to affect 300 lambs. And if that lamb can add, this ram can add even just five pounds to the growth of that market lamb, he's going to make you a lot of money. It, it adds up. Not to mention, if you want to keep replacements, he's going to uh, give you a better quality ewe who will also, combined with the ram, will overall start improving your flock uh, longevity and confirmation. The two go hand in hand. And uh, usually a sheep with good confirmation and growth also... Um, produce better lambs. We know what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for those um, good legs, good testicles. So when we, we sent a bunch to market the other day and uh, the question was like, why, are, why is this group better than that group? Well, because we have so many rams, it's a visual mainly. Uh, so and that's why I like the meeting at the feeder like this. I can go down and I can see right away who's got good legs, who's got bad legs. Legs are critical. They got to walk on them. It passes on heavily. Um, so you want to have good legs. With the rams, I can see their testicles. So um, when we went to the market the other day, there was one ram. He was a humdinger. Um, but we can't keep everybody. And... Even the guys at the sales barn said, oh my God, that, that's a nice ram. Like he picked him out out of the whole group. And the fault on that ram, the only fault on him was his testicles. And see how this guy, the attachment, his testicles are staying up quite close to his body. And they're wide and round. And he's got, and and they're even. Now the guy that we shipped, one side was ever so slightly smaller. It wasn't a huge thing. Just one was a little bit smaller, and when it's a little bit smaller, it causes the testicles to just do a little twist. So it'll just twist like that, just ever so slightly. But um, that little twist can possibly 
affect its uh, ability to throw out sperm and stuff like that and it can be genetic so when you're nitpicking that is what that was the thing we had to let go on him so um, and we are also selling terminal breeds for breeding stock so we're picking the fastest growers so all these guys are basically the same age within 30 days of each other so and they're all fed equally they all compete for feed equally some will be twins some will be singles but usually there isn't a huge difference by this age in the size of them the twins do tend to be a little smaller still um, but because we are selling terminal a terminal breed meaning we want them to produce fast growing meaty lambs we're gonna pick the fastest growers and you know as I've been doing these videos over the past few months I'm always talking about like number three number two number 79 um, because they were the fast growers and those are the ones we want to keep because that will pass on to other people and the longer you have a lamb in your possession that's going to market, the more expensive it is for you, the more chances of it getting sick, dying, something happening. And so the whole point with market lambs is to get them to their market weight as quickly as possible with, it, with good muscling. So that's why we're looking for those big guys. So fast growers for us are critical. Uh, for people doing more maternal breeds, they will be more focused on how many lambs uh, that you had or, or something like that. Our focus is meat, so um, and our lambing ratio is like 1.9 to 2, so it's right where we want it anyway. So we don't focus heavily on that. Um, and uh, birth, um, like twins, triplets and stuff, are not highly heritable anyway. So it's not something we pay heavy attention to. Um, in here we did hold two lambs back that uh, aren't ready for market yet. And uh, this is where I can show you faults. Actually, it looks like there's three. So this guy, so same age, um, but you can see this one, he's way smaller. And like I said, he's had the same opportunity to grow. Was his mother poor, more poor, had less milk, could be. But nevertheless, um, we can't keep him as a breeding stock ram because he's just not growing as well as the others. Also, his testicles for a ram are smaller. See how they're his compared to the guy beside him? You can see they're quite obvious. And that little guy over there has really little ones. You don't want that for a breeding ram either. See? Try to show you. There to there. See, very small. They say that can affect sperm count and stuff. I'm not sure how true that is, but it is something when you're registering sheep, uh, circumference of the testicles is important. So we look for it and we call for it. Small, small testicles are out, uneven testicles are out. Um, we don't like them to hang too much either. We want, um, a tighter attachment to the body just um, they don't get damaged as much that way and then um, so once we got the, the growth and the testicles we're going to be looking at backs um, we don't have a lot of slopey backs so I can't really show you a slopey back but if, if your sheep have slopey backs they fall apart really really quickly and they're gonna have no longevity so even that little guy that I was showing here he is a little bit slopey so 
you can see that his hips and his shoulders are standing up more than his back. You want the back to be nice and flat like this guy. And uh, the legs. We want the legs to be coming straight down like a table leg. We don't want them uh, bending inwards at the elbows or pigeon-toed or anything like that. Um, legs are a really tough one, especially with dorsets we find getting good legs. Uh, we, I think we're pretty happy with this group. But um, that's why I say this is the first cut. We're going to watch these guys as they grow and make sure they keep on keeping on because sometimes as they get older they will start to dip. Um, and also at that time, once we get the ones that are for sure, for sure staying, we're going to start looking even more nitpicky. We're going to look at their bites to make sure uh, their bites are proper meaning that the teeth touch the palate and aren't over or under too much. What else is a fault that you definitely don't want to see? Um, inverted eyelids, some sheep get that. Yeah. I can't, yeah, I can't show you that, but it's where the eyelashes poke into the eyes. Apparently it's highly genetic as well. Um, for us, the main, main thing are growth legs testicles a uh, ch chest like we oh depth like we want them really deep okay so I went back to the ram pen to see how they were doing on pasture and here they are they're all inside one of them's having a little rub there um, the pasture is still open and free to them but as you can see there's not a cloud in the sky. It's about 22 degrees Celsius. And there's still a few midges and stuff flying around. And these guys want nothing to do with going out on the pasture right now. Despite the fact that there's nice green grass out there. Um, I find that sheep, given the choice at midday, don't want to be out in the heat. Um, they're going to seek out the shade, and um, at our farm, the shade is up by the barn where we have this lean-to. Um, they don't want to be locked out in the pasture with uh, no cover coverage. Um, people assume that the shelters are for rain or snow or strong winds and stuff, but um, they don't like the full sun either. So um, that's why um, shelter is always important. Like even if you're doing pasture sheep, I, should, I would say that you should have trees or solar panels or a little lean-to of some sort where when the conditions are too hot, they have the ability to go get out of the extreme conditions. And uh, I can tell you, as soon as the sun starts to dip, these guys, the first thing they're going to do is go outside. Starting to look like summer around here. I still got to deadhead all my plants and get the gardens cleaned up a little bit. But it's growing. And way in the back of the farm. You can see Arnie's back there. Disking the fields. Because we're gonna be shearing on Friday, which is just a few days away. So we would like to get the fields prepared. Um, and then we'll have the shearing next. And then after that, hopefully, uh, We'll be planting, and I think uh, some of our sheep are going to new homes next week, too. So, um, I'm going to call that a day. And I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.